number nine, part A, electrical meters and Dr. Ken here with you again. So in this lesson, we're going to describe the operating principles of both analog and digital ammeters, voltmeters and ohm meters. I must admit, these days we far more use digitals than we'll ever use analogs in most contexts and unless it's a very special situation, we're going to be using digital meters. But you just need to be a little bit aware of how analog meters work and how you may be able to use them. So if you're working from our textbook, Electrical Principles by Phillips, then this is sections 9.1, 9.2 and 9.3, a little introduction, analog meter movements and digital meter modules. So meters are classified by the following. Their accuracy, which depends on how well the meter is made calibrated and maintained. So they're pretty important aspects. Accuracy doesn't just stay, it's got to be constantly checked and tested to maintain a high level of accuracy. Resolution, or how many decimal points you can read into the value, or how many um, counts there are in the analog to digital converter in a digital multimeter, that is the resolution. And the resolution for a meter stays fixed. Once a meter has been designed for a particular resolution, it never changes. And then there's sensitivity, or how much power it takes from the circuit it's connected to. So how sensitive it is to voltage changes, how, how bigger or smaller changes in the value will the meter be able to detect because of the amount of energy the meter itself takes from the circuit. If the meter takes too much energy from the circuit, then it will never measure the voltage or the current or the resistance for that matter properly or very well. So sensitivity is an important aspect of all meters. So multimeters reading a voltage. So here we have two typical multimeters. We've got a digital multimeter. This is a Fluke 79 category three measuring a 1.5 volt battery and you can see batteries are meeting close to 1.6, 1.59 and on the analog scale you see we had to blow up the analog scale to show you that you know there's the one and it's a little bit over halfway to the two so it's 1.5 so the difference between the analog and the digital is basically a digital you don't have to read the scale it, it works out the scale for you and just tells you it's 1.597 volts. You know, there's the number. But with an analog meter, it's a deflected needle pointer, and then you've got to read the value off a graduated scale. So that's the, the basic difference between the two. Uh, for example, the Fluke 79.3, the accuracy um, is here, and uh, I just thought I'd bring up the chart that um, I'll just get my pointer up and running and look at say the uh, DC voltage let's just choose that one and its accuracy on DC volts is plus or minus 0.3 of a percent so that's pretty good pretty good very very small amount of uh, error at 0.3 of a percent which is what we got in here it could be 0.3 of a percent over or 0.3 of a percent under. That's what the plus and the minus means. The resolution, for an example, um, on the digital meter, there are 4,000 counts and they update four times every second. So that's actually quite, uh, quite slow in the world of meters. So 4,000 counts just means whatever information is coming in, whether it's in amps, volts, or whatever, or parts of a volt, we can't have a resolution any better than 4,000 counts. And as I said, it updates four times per second. So I've get, put a little example across the bottom here. Let's say we had it on our 400 volts AC range and we wanted to know what the resolution was like. So we'd simply take the 400, we'd divide it by 4,000, that's the, where the counts come from, that's the counts, 
and that means we would have a resolution of 0 0.1 of a volt so our resolution the best we could measure is one tenth of a volt is the best that we can do analog meter movement so analog meter movement um, uses magnetic fields to do its work so basically we have a copper coil suspended inside a fixed magnet so we'll have a north side and a south side and we've got this coil of wire suspended in the middle where's the soft iron core and you can see the wire here here's the here's the wire coil you can see a very very small air gap that's that bit in there that I'm pointing at very small air gap and then connected to that is a pointer so the pointer is actually connected to this shaft so this shaft is running through the iron core and the coil are all connected and you've got the needle pointer connected to the shaft so as you pass a current through the coil the copper coil it's going to deflect inside the magnetic field and cause the pointer to deflect now the way it deflects is because these springs are holding that coil of copper wire suspended neatly in the middle of the magnetic field but the springs do more than that the springs also transmit the current into the coil itself so that's how the current gets to the coil via the springs so the springs not only provide suspension of the meter inside the magnetic field they also transmit the current into that inner coil then we have bearings sitting on the outside and you can see they're called pin bearings because the shaft sits like a pin and like a needle on a pin into the pin bearings so very 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 small amount of friction so this by definition is called a moving coil meter movement because we have a coil of copper that is moving inside the magnetic field so it's a moving coil meter movement in which the coil is deflected by an amount proportional to the current flowing in the coil so if I've got 100% of the current coil flowing I'm going to deflect the meter to 100% of what we call full scale deflection FSD it's called full scale deflection if I punch only 50% of the current that the coil is capable of then the meter will move to halfway obviously so it'll move to 50% and if I punch a quarter of the current in then the meter will move to the 25% position and of course we have a scale that sits behind this and that scale has been calibrated and set up to measure different kinds of values so that's how it works now a mechanical meter also has a mechanical zero which is what this little lever arm does here you can actually get access to it and you can push it just a couple of degrees it only moves five or ten degrees either direction and it just allows you to move that zero point here on the meter mechanically a little bit just so you can calibrate it dead certain across the zero volts or the zero ohms on the scale so that's how you set the zero mechanical adjustment so here's an example of that mechanical zero
that's that little arm that we were talking about here and it just changes the tension on the spring and allows us to play with this zero point here making sure that the meter is mechanically zeroed right on the right spot so mechanical zero adjustments moves the end of one hair spring to respond to the pointer so just playing with one hair spring to move it to the zero position only applies to an analog meter of course F SFD that's the um, full scale deflection so the smaller the FSD the more sensitive the meter is so we have the end of the spring etc so as we play with the sensitivity of it the more sensitive it is the more it will move so what I mean by more sensitive I'll just uh, turn my pen on so if our meter movement is good for uh, one milliamp and that would be called one milliamp full scale deflection that means if I put one milliamp through this coil my meter will move all the way to full scale all the way up here and if I was measuring in milliamps then this end of the scale would equal one milliamp halfway would be of course 0 0.5 of a milliamp and if I'm only a quarter of the way I'd have 0 0.25 of a milliamp so if I have a meter that has a full scale deflection of 10 amps let's say then instead of this being 1 this will be 10 amps and of course my meter won't be as sensitive it won't see a 3 or 4 milliamp change it will only see larger amounts of current change because the full scale is 10 amps the half scale would be 5 and the 3 and the 1 quarter scale point would be um, 2.5 amps so if my meter only changed by a couple of hundred milliamps the meter would not hardly move it wouldn't be as sensitive so I've got a full scale of 1 milliamp I've got a very sensitive meter to current but I've got a full scale of only 10 amps I've got much less sensitivity so we're now up to the digital meter now the digital meter works very much differently we have an electronic gadget called an analog to digital converter so this is an electronic device we won't go into how it works you just have to accept that it does and it allows us to take an analog value and turn it into a number so in the example we saw 4000 was the maximum number so if this is scaled up and let's say it's on a scale of 0 to 10 volts then at 0 volts the counter will count zero counts at five volts the counter will count 2,000 counts half the possible available and then at 10 volts it will tell you there's 4,000 counts total then the display does some scaling so the display driver does some scaling and instead of displaying counts it displays volts so 
when we've got zero volts going in, it's going to display zero. When I've got five volts coming in on the analog, it's going to display zero, zero, five, point zero. And when I've got 10 volts coming in, I'm going to get zero, one, zero, point zero. So our analog to digital converter converts the analog value of the voltage or the current or the resistance, it doesn't matter. Then the digital display scales it appropriately and gives you a number that gives makes gives you an understanding of exactly how many volts or how many amps is displayed. So that's how it works. Reasonably straightforward once you understand that an analog to digital converter just converts an analog number into a digital value. In this particular case, a number between 0 and 4000. So let's summarize. Measuring instruments are rated by accuracy, resolution and sensitivity. So the accuracy is something you have to maintain. You've got to work at it. Its resolution is built in, it's part of how the meter is built, and also its sensitivity is how the meter is built and what scales are available to you. Accuracy depends on the manufacturer, calibration and how much maintenance you do. Measuring instruments are either analog or digital, they're the only two categories. Most analog meters have what we call a moving coil meter movement in them. And for the lower the full scale deflection, the more sensitive the meter. So the smaller amount of voltage or the smaller amount of current it takes to move the meter movement over the full scale, the more sensitive the meter is. And all, due to, sorry, all digital meters are built in around an analog to digital converter IC that takes an analog value, a bit of current, a voltage or whatever, and converts it to digital, a number normally a number between zero and, or the one that we've been playing with, 4,000. So that brings us to the end of DC lesson number nine, part A. I hope you've enjoyed learning a little bit about the insides of how meters work.